Ooh, there's a crack in the screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Do what I can. Nor speakest to warn the wicked, 
from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet, if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness, and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because I have not given him warning, he shall die in his sin. And his righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man, that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live, because he is warned, also thou hast delivered thy soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to leave you in the blood won't be on our hands. Amen. Amen. Because we're going to tell you the truth in here. Amen. 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 I'm not going to hell for nobody. Amen. Amen. Oh, Amen. We're, we're going to go to page five. We're going to here in a while. Lord, bring it in me. Okay. Amen.
to everyone in their respective places. Amen. Amen. I just like to say, just thank and praise God. And I want to piggyback a little bit off the off of uh, Elder McGrady's uh, testimony. You know, it's it's funny how God does things. Amen. Amen. And, and and one thing he has said that we got in the fellowship and everything. Because I told him, I said, well, let me run in this uh, in this food line and get this milk I came here for first. Okay. And then I said, I'll be right back. So I went on in there and I, you know, began to thank God and all that. Because he had asked me later on, he said, well, you know, you just you just gave us a ride. And, you know, you didn't know. I said, I don't even you know who you were. I said, I walk by faith. I said, not by sight. Amen. And I trust God that God knows. He already knows the order. He already knows, as the elder said in the, in the Sunday school, he already knows what's up ahead of me day by day. So every day he allows me to wake up in the morning and eat all my day is already planned in him. Amen. All I got to do is walk it out. So anyway, we begin to fellowship and the elder begin to share some things with me, you know, about his spiritual walk. Amen. And, and Sister Wynn, she was sitting back there just nodding her head quietly. Amen. But anyway, we rolled down to some uh, garage down there on uh, Camden. Camden, Camden. Yeah, on Camden. You know, not too far near that intersection of Mabel, Nat, Natalie Road, and right there before that station. Yeah, there's a, a garage there, a mechanic there. But anyway, we began to talk about Jesus. I tell you, amen. And you know, that was my favorite subject anyway. So we began to fellowship. And you'd be surprised how much you can get out of your mouth, out of your heart to people, amen. And they, in return, can give to you between, what, my four, five, eight miles round trip, amen, my four miles one way. Amen. But anyway, once we got in there and stuff, it was, it was a pleasure to give them a ride. I wasn't afraid of him or anything, but he asked me, don't you, are you not afraid? Uh-uh, I walk by faith, sir. You know, I'm gonna believe that God knows what he's doing. Well, they begin to say that this is God himself doing this, amen? And so, of course, he's gonna say that around me, so that, that begins to open up my mouth even more, amen? <laughs> amen, but I bless God that you all are here today, amen? Thank God that, that you know, you, you said you were coming, and I appreciate that. I'm hoping this is not your last visit, but I'm hoping that you will come and just join in with the family. No pressure, of course. Of course, you know, but like I said, just join in with the family because all we have is the word of God here. And, and like I said, it's not a fake love. It's a real love, amen, that we have for one another and respect that we have for one another here in this house. So we bless God and we're growing, amen. We, 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 and we may not be growing in numbers, so to speak, but we're growing in spirit and in truth, amen. And it's God that's going to add to the church daily, such as shall be saved. So that's the way we look at it, amen. But I'm so happy that I got a chance to meet them and everything. And I'm telling you, I was, every day I was like, Lord, I said, Lord, take everything out of their way. Take every hindrance out of their way. I said, no excuses, Father. Don't let them find no reason. You know, I, I'm serious. I was doing this all week, even up till this morning. I got here, and I was standing looking, and I said, "Well, Lord," I said, "Well, they just said they were coming to Sunday school." I said, "But Lord, I thank you." I said, "Okay, I'm gonna just let it go. <laughs> just let it go." And then I noticed that Elmer was teaching. His eyes were rolling outside, as so though he was looking at something, right? And then when I did see the car come further down, I was like, oh, "Okay, then that must be them." And so. Yeah, but thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, you know, but, but yeah, but that, I had, I had the wife promise, okay, yeah, I had the wife promise, so, yeah, no, that don't always matter, but I had the wife promise, amen, so we thank God that God brought you on in, and we hope that something is said today, or when we begin to, as we praise God, and song, that God will bless you, because I know that he will, amen, so we thank God that he
what we're doing. Amen. Well, yeah. God knows what we're doing. Amen. So that's what matters. Amen. 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 Okay, go to page six. Yeah, we, we, I don't know that we've done this. If we have, it's been a while. Saving my life. Thank you. 
And I don't know that we're going to preach through the whole thing, but I know where we're going to begin with. Amen. Amen. We're going to start with chapter 1. Amen. So, so, so that's a sure thing. Amen. We're, and we're going to get through chapter 1 if it kills us. Uh, so, with that said, uh, this is one of the key books of the New Testament. Uh, and as we go through the text, you'll see why. The Apostle Paul uh, is very meticulous in this letter to lay out for the church in Rome, first off, the reason for the gospel. Secondly, the process of salvation. A spiritual battle that is going on between the spirit and the flesh in every man. The two debts we all choose between and the perfect timing of Christ's sacrifice. Uh -huh. And there are some other topics as well, and we'll look at them as we go through it. But these are some of the main things that Paul hits on in this book. And he doesn't just do it one time. Paul is redundant. If you've ever been in the military or worked for the government or worked for a big corporation, they're redundant in everything that they do. In the military, if you have one copy of something, you have a hundred. When, when, when you go to, to transfer duty stations, they give you a stack of orders this thick, and it's all the same piece of paper. That's right, that's right. So Paul, in writing the book of Romans, he is redundant in the things that he says. And he is this way because he's trying to get a point across to the, to the Roman church and to us who would be reading this letter later. <laughs> now, I want to make a note on this. When I say the church in Rome, I am not referring to the apostate church of Rome today. I, I just want to I want to throw that out there right up front because when you say the church in Rome, everybody, not everybody, everybody automatically assumes that you're talking about the Pope. And we are not talking about the Pope. Amen. Um, and, and I'm going to clarify that. Peter is not the official first bishop of Rome. In fact, there's no biblical evidence that Paul or that Peter ever went to Rome. Amen. Even though he was he was killed and martyred by Nero, there's no biblical evidence that he ever stepped foot in Rome. Amen. So so that kind of squelches that. The church in Rome was started by Paul. When he was in prison there, as recorded in by Luke in the book of Acts, chapter 28, verses 11 through 31. And you go and look at that. That's how it took Paul that much time to get there. And while he was in a house, in house arrest in Rome, he began the Roman church. Uh -huh. Then he was let go. A lot of people think that at the end of the book of Acts is where Paul died. And it's not. That's right. He was let go at that time. His, his killing would happen later at a second arrest that he wasn't expecting. Amen. Amen. So this church was began by the Apostle Paul. So if they were going to go by our, our official bishop, it would have to be Paul. Because oh. he started the church there. But he never went by that title. Uh -huh. So... And third, the Roman Catholic Church wasn't even around until around 325 A.D. So there's some lying going on in their history. <laughs> and that's free. Um, and that's a, a sermon for another time. But I just wanted to kind of lay a foundation there to make it plain. Uh, the Pope is a usurper of the seat of Christ. He, he is sitting in a seat of authority that doesn't belong to him or claiming 
to sit in a seat of authority that doesn't belong to him. Amen. So this first chapter of, of Romans has three distinct sections that we're going to look at. There's the greeting, then there's the declaration of the power of the gospel, and then the declaration of the wrath of God on sinful man. And this is important, and you have to get this, because this middle section segues from Paul saying, hey, I I'm writing this letter to you to why men need to be saved. Amen. Because there's a wrath that is coming upon man. That's right. So, let's get to it. Romans chapter 1, beginning in verse 1, and, and I'm reading from the Legacy Standard Bible, so it may be a little different, but not much. It says, Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, called as an apostle, having been set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh, who was designated as the Son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we receive grace and apostleship for the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles for the sake of his name. Among whom... You also were called of Jesus Christ to all who are beloved of God in Rome, called as saints, grace to you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Paul starts out and he says, I'm a slave to Christ Jesus. Amen. In other words, I, I bonded myself to Christ. Yes. See, see, we... We get this wrong idea because man messes everything up. Amen? He does. Slavery, there are two types of slavery. There's chattel slavery, which is when they put chains on you and beat you and make you do things. That's the kind of slavery the devil has. He's a, he's a harsh taskmaster. But then there is a different kind of slavery. There is a bond of love. Mm -hmm. And this is what Paul's talking about. He's saying, I, I sold myself as a love slave, a bond servant to Christ Jesus because of what he's done for me. See, he loved me first because I didn't love him. Paul makes that very clear yeah. in his writings. He said, I did everything that I could to destroy this way. I hated anything to do with the name of Jesus, but now I'm, in, in, I'm a slave of his because I love him, because he opened my eyes that I could truly see. And because of that, he has called me an apostle. He has made me a messenger. He has given me a calling. And listen, the Lord has a calling for everyone who has the faith. Amen. All who come to Christ, all who have been redeemed, have a calling. That's right. That's right. Well, I'm not preaching. Oh, yes, you are every time you walk out the door. Well, I'm not a pastor. Yes, you are. If you have children, you are a pastor. Amen. If you are a husband who has a wife, you're a pastor. Amen. Amen. Well, what about the wife? She's a pastor to the husband. Amen. Now, the husband is supposed to be the federal headship of the house Amen. under Christ, but he doesn't lord that over his wife. But they work together in tandem, both of them giving 100% to a marriage. They're pastors. And if a husband and wife 
both are in Christ and they have children. They're both pastors to those children. Amen. And every time you walk out the door of your house, you're a missionary. That's right. That's right. You're an evangelist. Uh -huh. So each of us has a calling. Paul was called to be an apostle. But all of us are called to be saints. If I'm in Christ, I have been called to be holy and pure to Christ Jesus. Amen. In other words, I'm set apart. Amen. Amen. And, and what am I set apart for? So I can get stuff? No. I'm set apart for the gospel of the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. And there are some who, who call themselves pastors... Who, who have forgotten what they were set apart for. That's true. That's true. You know where I'm going on this one, don't you? Come follow me the way that <laughs> Pastor sent me a clip the other day, and, and it's an old sermon that this guy did. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not going to call him a pastor because he's a heretic. Jamal Bryant <laughs> was preaching at the installation service for Marvin Sapp back in 2019. And he made this statement. He said that, that at, at the risk of being heretical, which right there, yeah. Yeah. when you make that statement, that means you know yeah. that what you're fixing to say is wrong. And yet you're going to do it anyway. Uh -huh. and, and here's the statement he made. He said that Jesus Christ for 80, 85% of his life was out of order. Yeah. In other words, what he was saying is Jesus was in rebellion against his call from the Father for 85% of his life. In other words, Jesus was in sin for 85% of his life. Yeah. Now, and where he got these facts, I don't know. He said that at 13, he began working as a carpenter in his dad's yeah. shop. Yeah. Then he made the statement that at 17, he took over the family business. Now, now, I, I'm, I don't know about your Bible. Nowhere in here does it say that. There is no historical reference to what age Jesus took over the family of business. But he said that what Jesus did was that he rejected his call until he was 30 years old. Well, I have a problem with that. Because, number one, if Jesus was in rebellion against the Father, he cannot be the sinless atonement right. for the sin of man. That's right. Amen. Amen. Which Amen. means that our hope is in vain. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And our preaching is in vain. Yes. And all those who have died believing that Christ is the Redeemer died and went to hell. Secondly, Jesus is God. Amen. He is part of the triune Godhead. And if he is in rebellion against God, that means that there's a breach in the Trinity. Right. If there's a breach in the triune Godhead, what happens? The universe implodes on itself. 
So, if we're set apart to proclaim the gospel in spirit and truth, and I stand in a pulpit and make an insane and, and blatantly untrue statement about the creator of the universe, I have forgotten what God called me and set me apart to do. Amen. So we've been set apart. And if I've been set apart and I've left the life of sin and I've attached myself to Christ as a bondservant of His, then I'm no longer attached to sin. That's right. That's right. Amen. So, in that line, he's not a pastor. Amen. Amen. And there's a whole lot of pre people who claim the title pastor who are doing the same thing. But Paul, in this, in this opening... He's trying to get them to understand. This is who I am. This is the authority that God has given me to write you instruction. Uh -huh. And we got to get that. See, the church in Rome, by the time he writes this letter, they got a bunch of new people there who, who don't know Paul. And he's trying to let them know, look, you've heard I started your church. But here's why I have authority. It's not because I started the church. It's because God has called me and set me apart as an apostle to speak words, to challenge you, to exhort you, and to encourage you. And if need be, to chastise you. So that's what his greeting is about. And like I said, all of us who are called have been set apart for a reason. Yes, we have. And I'm going to I'm going to give you in Acts nine we see Paul's conversion, and, and it lets us know why he's set apart. Because see, Jesus tells Ananias when when he tells him, hey. There's a guy named Saul, and he's waiting for you to come and pray for him so that he can see again. And, and Ananias is like, I know that guy. I've heard of him. He's trying to kill people like me. Yeah. And, and you want me to go to him and, and, and pray for him so he can kill me? Mm -hmm. And Jesus tells him, he says, he is a chosen vessel of mine. That's right. That's right. Now Paul says that he was called before he was brought forth from his mother's womb. In, in Galatians chapter 1, listen to what Paul writes. For I make known to you, brothers, that the gospel which I am proclaiming is good news is not according to man. For I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it. I didn't go to seminary. That's right. But I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. In other words, Jesus showed me because I was, I was a, a part of the council of Judaism. He took me through the scriptures of the prophets and Moses and revealed himself to me through that and through personal revelation as I spoke with him. Man didn't teach me this stuff. That's right. That's right. And he goes, for you have heard of my former conduct, how I used to persecute the church of Jesus Christ. And I did it beyond measure. I was going to kill everybody that they called themselves a believer. I was going to round them all up. And I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries. And then in verse 15 in chapter 1 of Galatians, he says, 
believe God, who had set me apart from my mother's womb, called me through His grace, was pleased to reveal His Son in me, so that I might proclaim Him as good news among the Gentiles. And I did not immediately consult with flesh and blood, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me. But I went away to Arabia and returned once more to Damascus. In other words, I took my stuff and went to the desert. And I spent three years in, in the University of Jesus and the Holy Ghost. And he revealed himself to me. He revealed this gospel that I have been charged to proclaim. That's my authority. That's right. That's right. So, that so that's his greeting. Now in this section, second part, he speaks about his longing to see Rome. Look at Romans 1, beginning in, in verse 8. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, because your faith is being proclaimed throughout the world. Everybody's heard about y'all. You're sitting in the seat of paganism, and you're praising the one God. You're serving Christ Jesus, and it's getting out. And y'all ain't even got a TV program. You ain't even on YouTube. You're not on Facebook. You ain't on Twitter. You ain't on none of that. But but the word of you is getting out. Yes, yes, yes. When you're a place, when, when there's a body of believers who are on fire for Christ, and they are following his word, they're proclaiming his word, and they are coming together in unity as one in God's word, people are going to find out. You don't have to put, a, put an advertisement out. But he goes on and he says, For God, whom I serve in my spirit, in the gospel of his Son, is my witness as to how without ceasing I make mention of you. Always in my prayers, earnestly asking, if perhaps now at last, by the will of God, I may proceed, I may succeed in coming to you. Paul understands that it's God's will that we go places. That's right. That's right. That's right. See, James, James got that. Jesus' brother, he got that when he was writing his letter. He says, you say, oh, tomorrow we'll go here or we'll go there or we'll do that or we'll do that. And he says, no, you, you need to say, if it's God's will, I'll do this. For what is your life? What is your life? You don't even know if you're going to get the next breath. And here you are making these boasts. You're going to go here tomorrow. Paul understands that. Amen. He says, if it's God's will, he'll let me come to you. Amen. I want to, but that's in God's hands, not mine. Mm -hmm. I can't go down to, to the local Hebrew bus station and climb on Gray Camel and come on over there. I can't do that. If it's God's will, I'll do that. And he'll provide the way. Amen. And he goes on. I may see him coming to you. Verse 11. For I long to see you that I may impart some spiritual gift to you that you may be strengthened. He's not going there to hang out and just eat dinner. Amen. Amen. He wants to come so that he can impart spiritual gifts to them for their strengthening. I want to come to you so that I can share with you what the Lord is doing in other churches around the region and in what God is doing in me and the miracles that we've seen happening, lives we've seen change, so that it will build you up. That's right, that's right. Amen. And I'm not coming so that you can put me on the platform in some high back chair with ten other people. 
that are just there so they can be recognized. I don't care if you recognize me or not. I'm coming so that I can give you the word. See, religion gets it all backwards. That's right. See, they want people to come so we can we can pat each other on the back. Uh-huh. True believers want to come so they can hear the word and they can proclaim the word. That's right. And if you don't like that, talk to God. God's not going to share his glory. Verse 12, that is to be mutually encouraged while among you by each other's faith, both yours and mine. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that often I have planned to come to you and have been prevented so far so that I may have some fruit among you also, even as among the rest of the Gentiles. I am under obligation both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to the wise and to the foolish. In this way, for my part, I am eager to proclaim the gospel to you also who are in Rome. I want to come so we can lift each other up. There's things God is doing within you that, that I don't know about and I want to know so that my faith can be encouraged by what you're witnessing taking place as, as you're encouraged by what I share with you. We mutually work together as the body of Christ to build one another up. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Told you, Paul's letter, he says a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what he's saying should, should ring out among the church and to the true church, it does. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. But, but to all these jackrabbits who just want to get around and, 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 and oh, we, we got so-and-so here, we got so-and-so here, and, and you come on up so that I can give you this and give you that. That ain't what this is about. If our goal is not to glorify God, we're in the wrong. Amen. Amen. See, I, I could care less than anybody ever knew my name. Amen. And know who I am. As long as they hear what God has given me to say. That's right. That's right. See, in Ephesians, he talks about this. He says, There is one body, one spirit, just as also you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all, through all, and in all. But each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Now, this expression, he's talking about the the ascension and, and ascendance of Christ. But in verse 11 in Ephesians 4, he says, And he himself gave some as apostles, some as prophets, some as evangelists, some as pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints for the work of service to the building up of the body of Christ. That's right. Amen. You wasn't made apostle so you could get patted on the back. That's right. Did you know that, Pastor? That, that's amazing, isn't it? So amazing. God didn't even call somebody to be a prophet so they can run around and, and, and get their name on the billboard. Yeah. Yeah. He did it for the equipping of the body of Christ. That's right. Every calling, every individual who is born again in Christ is born again to build up the body of Christ. That's for the equipping of the saints and the glorifying of God. Amen. And, and, if we, and if we enter the faith for any other reason than that, we got it wrong. Amen. And, and if someone enters the ministry for any other reason than that, they need to step down. Amen. Amen. Because they're in it for the wrong reason. Amen. I, our goal is to equip the saints. 
for the building up of the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and the full knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ so that we are no longer to be children tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men by craftiness and deceitful schemes so that we're built up so we don't chase every single prophet that comes into town to get a word. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Unless that word's from God. And it bears witness with his word. And it builds me up. It equips me that I learn something. That's right. Amen. Not so I feel good. I, I, I heard a clip of Oprah Winfrey the other day. She said, God is a feeling. And if you're not feeling God, and I was, and we already know she ain't reading the same Bible we anyway. But, 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 but the fact that God is a feeling. No. We live by faith. Not a feeling. Because right. if I went by my feelings, okay. I'd be a poor, pitiful excuse for believing. God is not a feeling. No, he is a person. He, he is a, a creator. Not a creator. He is the creator of the universe. He is the sovereign God over all things. And whether I feel him or not, he's working. Whether I see him doing it or not, God is working. Amen. Because God is sovereign. He's always working. Mm -hmm. If God wasn't working, the universe would fall apart because he holds it in his hand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so we're to work and not be deceived by the trickery of men and the craftiness and deceitful scheming. These self-help preachers to throw a little bit of scripture in to satisfy their critics, but all they're doing is mouthing what people like Tony Robbins and these other people are telling you on the, the, the um, what do they call that? The <clears throat> something of attraction. Oh, the law of attraction. If I say it long enough, it's going to come to me. That's not scripture. Scripture says if I'm obedient, if I'm in Christ and his word is in me, I can ask what I will and, and, and he'll give it to me. But understand, if I'm in Christ and Christ is in me, the word is in me, the desires of my heart are going to be different than what they are right now. They're going to be focused on the kingdom. They're going to be focused on what will glorify God. They're going to be focused on what will draw people to the cross of Christ. That's right. That's right. And, and that's what we're to be building the body of Christ to. That's what we're, we're called to teach the body of Christ, is to teach God's people how to serve Him, how to long for Him, how to want to do what He wants done for His glory. And that's what Paul is wanting to do to them. He wants to come together so that they can together lift one another up and encourage one another. Amen. Amen. Like Pastor said, we're a family here. We're going to encourage one another. That's right. That's right. We love each other. And that's probably why we don't have a whole lot of people because people don't want to be in a place like that. No, Most people want to just meld into the background. Nobody know who they are. Mm -hmm. Come in, check my box for this. I want to check. Yeah. I'm Christy because I went to church. Well, when you walked into your garage, did that make you a car? When you walked into Zach's piece, did that make you a chicken dinner? <laughs> when 
when you walked into Starbucks, did that make you a venti triple mocha latte? No. Checking boxes does not make you a part of the body of Christ. We must be baptized into the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ Jesus, washed in the blood of the Lamb, and set apart as holy and righteous in Him for the glory of God. And the equipping of the saints. Amen. See, if our Amen. ultimate goal isn't to be beneficial to the body of Christ. Now I'm a member of the body of Christ. Even right. though I may be a pinky toe, I'm That's still right. part of the body of Christ. That's right. That's right. And I have a job to do. Amen. If I'm the pinky toe, I keep I keep balance. That's right. That's right. Without the pinky toe, I can't walk. It's an important body part. Yes, it is. Now, if I'm the appendix, I don't know what appendix does because they always take them out. But it has a purpose until it gets gone bad, again. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. But there are other body parts that go bad too and have to be yeah. cut off. Yeah. What causes that? rebellion against God. Amen. Now, at, at the end of this section, Paul, Paul makes a statement. And, and, and I want you to get, he says nine words. The most important nine words of the first 17 verses of the book of Romans. In verse 15, he says, in this way, for my part, and here they come, I am eager to proclaim the gospel to you also who are in Rome. Nine most important words here. I am eager to proclaim the gospel to you. The good news is the gospel. And I say in the first 17 verses, because in verse 18, Romans goes off the rail on the wrath of God. But before Paul gets to the wrath of God, he sets up the precedent he sets up what can change man from falling under this wrath of God that he spends from verse 18 to verse 32 dealing with. So these nine words of the question we have to ask ourselves is this. Why is the apostle Paul eager to proclaim the gospel? And he answers this question. And we all need to eagerly and diligently hear the words for what he writes next. In Romans 1.16, he writes, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, but the righteous will live by faith. So he's eager to present the gospel. Why? Because the gospel is the power of God. On salvation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There is no other power that transforms a man. That's right. That's right. Than the power of the gospel. Amen. Amen. 
The gospel breaks the chains of sin. The gospel breaks the chains of fear. The gospel breaks the chains of doubt. The gospel breaks the yoke of addiction. The gospel reconciles us to the one who created us in his own image. That's what the gospel does. Nothing else does that. There's no other thing in the word of God that transforms a man other than the gospel preached in spirit and in truth with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. It will shake you to the core. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. It will penetrate to the deepest and hardest heart. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. It will open the blindest of eyes. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And it will pierce the deafest of ears. The gospel. The gospel. Yes, sir. The gospel changes men from what they were born as Mm -hmm. to who God has created them to be in and through Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. When listen to what he writes to the church in Corinth, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Do you not know? that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you were washed. You are sanctified. You are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the spirit of our God. The gospel sets you free. All right now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When you heard the gospel, it drove you to a place of repentance. Uh-huh. When you heard the gospel, you realized you were born in rebellion against the holy God. When you heard the gospel, it brought you to a place where God could take you and mold you and shape you into who he wanted you to be since before the creation of the world. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The gospel. Oh, we have more men and women who proclaim the gospel. You quit telling people frivolous, wasteful things. We proclaim that which would lead them to truth, lead them to righteousness, lead them to holiness in the Holy God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He goes on in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. He says, For the love of Christ controls us, having concluded this, that one died for all. Paul's giving the gospel. One died for all. Therefore all died. And he died for all so that they would live who live would no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. Therefore, from now on, we recognize no one according to the flesh. When you know Christ, when you have been filled with the Spirit, when the Word of God is active in you, and when you are walking in accordance with it, doing what we were called to do by Christ as ambassadors of the kingdom, we don't see people in the flesh. Now we see people as Christ saw them suspended between heaven and earth on the yes, cross. Yes, yes, my Lord. He saw every individual ever born and ever would be born as he was hanging on the cross. And he saw them as souls that were needed to become reconciled to God. Right. Amen, amen. Now he's calling us to see them in the same light. Paul says we no longer see men as flesh. That's right. That's right. We see them as those who need a Savior. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he goes on and he says, we recognize no one according to the flesh, even, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him in this way no longer. 
When you, we know Christ, we no longer look at him as just a man who came and died on a cross. Now we see him as the Lamb of God. Now we see him as the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Now we see him as the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. That one by which no, by no other name Amen. is men to be saved by. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. That's why the gospel is important. He goes on and he says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. That's why he said, and such were some of you. But you were washed, you were justified, you were sanctified, you were changed. You were conceived and born, marked for hell. God in his mercy. Sent someone to proclaim to you the gospel. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Thank you. Now you are no longer what you were. Amen. Amen. You're not a thief anymore. You're a child of God. That's right. You no longer abuse your body in, in, with strange flesh. Now you are a child of God. Amen. You, you are born in the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Through the gospel. Because the gospel is the power of God yes, unto salvation. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He says, now all these things are from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Do you see that? Yes, yes, sir. Do you, you get that? Yes. That's why Paul was eager to proclaim the gospel to them. Because when we're made into a new creation, immediately, that's right, that's right, that's immediately, right. when we become joint heirs with Christ, when we become sons of God, immediately he transfers this ministry of reconciliation yes, yes, to yes, us yes, that we should go yes, into yes, all the world and preach yes, the gospel yes, to every creature. Yes, yes. Everyone in my circle of influence is a target. Amen. <laughs> yes, they are. Amen. You think SEAL Team 6 is bad? You, you get a, a child of God on fire with the gospel. There's no agent in hell that can stand in front of them. That's right. That's right. And there is no, no slave of Satan. That does not have a target on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. And they go out locked and loaded with the gospel. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He says, namely, that God was in Christ reconciling us, or reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. And he has committed to us the word of reconciliation, the gospel. So then we are ambassadors for Christ as God is pleading through us. Did do you understand the concept of that? Amen. Now, God, he has taken me out of sin. He has brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. And as he did so, he dressed me in the, in the armor of light that I would shine forth in the darkness of this world. And now as an ambassador of his, I am pleading with a lost and dying world. Come to the cross. Come to the king. Come to the one who can change you. Not ashamed of the gospel. See, all the house of prayer is when we come to it, this, this is this is our embassy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. When we come to the embassy so, so that we can get our orders for the week. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. We can get our training so that, so that we're prepared to go out into the world. Amen. We come together so that we can be encouraged. Because once we walk out the door, we enter back into darkness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because, as he says, we're ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven in a hostile world that's around us. So we come to the embassy to be encouraged. Mm -hmm. Mm 
Paul's saying, I, I want to come to you so that I can strengthen you and you can strengthen me so that we can go out and do the work of the ambassadors that we've been called to do, to proclaim this gospel Amen. that changes people. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He goes on and he says, as God is pleading through us, we beg you on behalf of Christ be reconciled to God. He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Amen. Oh, Jesus wasn't off for 85% of his life. He came forth, the Bible says, at just the right time, That's right. That's Jesus right. died for sinners. That's right. See, it, there was a time set before the foundations of the world, and Jesus knew when that time was. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. See, if, if that wasn't the case, when he was 12 years old and was in the, the temple, amazing the chief priests and the yeah. Pharisees and yeah. the scribes, with his knowledge. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And Joseph and Mary came to him and said, what are you doing? And he said, didn't you know I must be about my father's business? They would have just left him and he would have been turned loose then. But his time was not yet. At just the right time. He entered into his worldly ministry, his earthly ministry. Uh -huh. And then he became sin for us. There is nothing that the gospel of Christ cannot change in the life of those who hear it. Nothing. Nothing. That's N-O-T-H-I-N-G for those who are taking notes. Nothing. And make that all capitals. Amen. Highlighted. Amen. With lines under it. And a box around it. And stars. Got it. Got it. Nothing. Nothing. They can't Nothing. change. The disciples went out and proclaimed that word. John the Baptist came proclaiming that word. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Mm -hmm. Jesus, when he found out that John the Baptist was taken into prison, Jesus went out and he said, the, the kingdom of heaven is now at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Yes, he, yes, he, yes, he, he didn't say, believe me. Mm -hmm. He said, believe the gospel. Because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Because the gospel tells you who I am and what I've come to do. Well, I got all kinds of scriptures, but we're running out of time. I'll close with this. Listen to these words. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The gospel is all about the blood of Jesus. So when Paul says, I, I, I'm eager to come to you and proclaim the gospel. Are you eager to proclaim the gospel? Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. And if you're watching and, and you've never heard the gospel, today's the day to believe the gospel. I don't care what you're facing in life. I don't care what, what life has done to beat you down. But you need to repent of sin. I, I'm not smiling Joel. It says 99%, 99.9% of 
Nine percent of people are good people. They just make bad decisions. You're bad. You were born bad. You were conceived bad. And unless you repent and believe the gospel and get washed in the blood of the Lamb, you will die bad. But I'm, I, I do good things that ain't got nothing to do with it. The gospel says I was born a rebel against a holy God. And that without Christ, I'm born dead. Well, I'm conceived dead. I'm born dead. I live dead. I die dead. And then I'm judged dead. Amen. 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 Christ Jesus can take you from death to life. He can lift you up out of the pit, out of the miry clay. He can take you by your hand. And he can break those chains of bondage that holds you captive to the world. Well, I was born this way. God can change that. And I'm not just talking about those of the alphabet community. I'm talking about swindlers. I'm talking about liars. I'm talking about adulterers. Talking about thieves. Whatever you're bound in, Christ Jesus can break that chain and set you free. We need men and women who will proclaim that gospel. Not talk about social issues. Because social injustice is born out of sin. And and until the heart is changed, nothing else is going to change. And that's a one heart at a time thing. Proclaim the gospel. Preach the gospel. Live the gospel. Walk the gospel. Because the gospel in Christ Jesus is man's only hope. So if you're watching today and and, and you need this salvation, you need to be set free. I I can't pray a prayer for you. I say this all the time. I can't tell you what to pray. I don't know what you need to repent of. But I know all you need to do is cry out to Jesus. If if that's the only thing you can say is Jesus. And he'll hear that and he will come and he will lead you through that process of repentance. Yes, he will. Step by step. And he will reconcile you to God. If you knew him at one time and you you sold your birthright, it's time to get it back. Amen. 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 He'll He'll give you the price. He'll give you what it takes to purchase it back. His blood. We've got to do something so sorry. Yes, yes. Wash me, cleanse me, make me real again. Yes. Restore unto me. Yes. If you want to hear the next part of this, come back next week. Amen. We're just getting cranked up. I love teaching. Because I'm going to build the body of Christ. I want to see believers go forth as, as ambassadors of Christ and set the world on fire. Father God, I thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you for all that you are, for who you are, and what you've done in us. You you have washed us. You have cleansed us. You have changed us. Now, Lord, send us forth with a heart to share what we have with others. Yes, Lord. Yes. Father, those who have heard that need to know you, Father, lead them 
to the cross. Lead them, Father, to an old-fashioned altar if need be. And let them just weep before you till they pray through. Sometimes that's all we need to pray through. Father, and use us. Oh, God, use us. And as we go from this place today, Father, be with us, lead us, use us, guide us, and strengthen us. And we give you thanks for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.